We're here at the beautiful Embassy Suites in Las Vegas, looking at the two gorgeous swans named Elvis and Priscilla. And this brings me to the mind of a question named from Christine, uh, who emailed to me, why in England and some other parts of Europe are swans protected by royalty and considered almost divine? Well, Christine, that's a great question. And the truth of the matter is, swans are filled with mythology from, from all countries. Um, the, usually they represent the goddess and the moon, but occasionally, like Apollo and Zeus, would transform into God, into swans too. What it was when otherworldly people, like the Valkyries from the Vikings, when they wanted to visit Earth, they would come down in the form of swans. And then there was the Tuha Dadan, that was the race that ruled England, and they were like half gods, demigods, fairy folk, whatever you like to call them, and. When um, Baib Dada was selected as king of the Tuha Dadan, the King Lear of water, the ocean king, was very, very angry. So he offered, um, offered a daughter to Lear to sort of make peace. And Lear grew to love this wife, Ava, and they had many children, four in fact. But then she died and Lear started you know, I guess making some noise again. So the king gave him his second daughter, whose name was Ife. Anyway, Ife was very, very jealous of the children and their love for each other and their father. She couldn't quite bring herself to kill them, but she did turn them into swans. So in effect, swans are descendants of the Tuha Dadahan. So semi-royal, semi-divine, and that's why they represent love, unity, and transformation. Swans will usually make for life, just like Priscilla and Elvis here.